Welcome back everyone. Uh, I wanted to start out with uh, a thank you to everyone that's written me and all the messages that you've sent, particularly the messages I've received from India. I look forward to learning more from you about your country and about your gun laws and the guns you have and the guns that you don't have, uh, but please write more. Um, so a special welcome to, to viewers from India as well as Pakistan. You know, we're kind of isolated over here. I try to read everything that I can and I always have. But overall, I know we're generally in the dark. So everything that you send me is meaningful. I read it. If I don't answer, it's partly a function of time. And sometimes I don't know how to respond. But um, I'm glad to hear that you have shooting sports, that you have enough or is it quite a bit of freedom actually and can own guns. And uh, I look forward to learning more, so keep writing. Um, I'm here. And um, uh, I was going to start out actually with a funny topic. It's this stuff, Rewax. Some of you have written me. You know, people send me messages about all kinds of things. And this is made by our good friends in the United Kingdom. And a lot of times, you all you can see, it's a well-loved can. And a lot of times you'll have a gun that has scratches or, you know, whatever. And I wouldn't get involved in the refinishing stuff. That just most of the time decreases value. So you buy a can of this stuff. There are probably other products like it, but I just don't know them. I've always used this and it, it covers up scratches and a lot of times it makes the gun look great. So for those questions, what do I use to, to root, uh, you know, routinely maintain the stock finish? I use this stuff. And naturally, I have no association with this company. I just use the product. Um, okay, now getting to the requests. A lot of you have asked me to compare, or a few people asked me to repair, uh, compare uh, the Browning T-Bolt. So if it's a fairly quick video. When I received the request for this particular video, I was very happy. The T-Bolt, um, this one's made in Belgium. This is the old model. And um, I've, I've had these on and off for years, and I'm sure other gun people and collectors know what I'm talking about. You tend to get a rifle and then you get a funny idea that you should sell it for some reason. And so you sell it and then you think, geez, why did I do that? And the T-Bolt um, now has um, tenure in my gun vault. I've used these original T-bolts for, and for years, fired thousands of rounds. I've never had jams, malfunctions. I mean, probably something came up that was my own fault, but the request was compare the old T-bolt to the new T-bolt. So this is the made in Belgium. The operation is very simple. You know from my Model 52 Winchester video how conventional bolt action 22s lock up and there isn't much involved in locking up a 22 because the pressures are so low. So the T-bolt has a unique action. In this case, you simply move the back bolt back and forward. Now, this is the original one, and you can see the rapidity, the, the speed of reloading. I'm just showing you that because speed is kind of a novelty, but we all know most of the time you don't really need speed. You're shooting it at this rate. You fire, then you reload. The original T-bolt has a very short action. You could take note of the bolt travel. Very short here. And I have to always remember to slow down my movements for the cameraman. So uh, very easy to operate bolt. Almost like a biathlon rifle made by hand shoots, but not really. That Fortner action is something else but um, we'll do a video on those soon but very easy to work and uh, you can see how it locks up it's it's a t-bolt so i guess they picture this somehow being a t and i mean it's immensely strong for a 22 this is never going to fail and um, it has a removable magazine just a typical um, single stack whatever that is Looks like maybe five shots. Yeah, I would say five. I think I have a 10 shot someplace. But I, I mean, when do, we, when do you need 10 shots? And this, 
this T-bolt, just an unstoppable machine for pest control and plinking and whatnot. Probably one of the most fun 22s I've ever come across. So I don't know if you can absorb that. This one has this fancy Williams aperture sight, which I didn't put on there. I bought this used. I buy, buy, I buy most of my guns used unless it's, you know, some new thing that, that I just have to have and examine or people are asking me about it. And uh, with the aperture sight, um, you, you virtually almost never miss without thinking much. So that's the T-Bolt. It came in a standard uh, version, which this is, and then it came with in a, in a grade two or deluxe version, which had checkering. And I've got one of those around here someplace too. But this is the one I, I um, use most often. So made in Belgium, and um, you know my usual advice with guns, if you come across these in any kind of condition, uh, has a browning butt plate. I only mention that because somebody wrote me that they were told that they came with a rubber recoil pad. I've never seen one with a rubber recoil pad. I mean, it could be possible, but I don't know. I don't think so. And then here's the, um, here's the modern one. Like they stopped making these for, I don't know how long, quite a while. So the price kept going up on the used market. And then I guess Browning decided, well, we should reintroduce the T-bolt. The and I'll try to do a good job here. You can see the bolt travel is, um, is slightly longer on the new action, which is closest to me. Other than that, you can see the, the, the locking on this side and on this side. So that's, it's the same locking. This, I decided not to take off this aperture sight for filming. Otherwise I could show you the same locking on the old T-bolt. You can kind of see it lock up here. I don't know if I have the finger strength to, to do that. I do. So that's, that's the old one. Anyhow, and um, they changed the position of the bolt handle on the new one, which again is closest to me. And I was just comparing before filming, like, I guess people like to know which is the better action. So I did this a few times. Now this one I've never fired. This one just showed up the other day. It has a fantastic rotary magazine. And we all know rotary magazines don't jam from the 1022. And the 22 long rifle is a rimmed cartridge. So it's not the most friendly cartridge, cartridge for, for jamming purposes, but this one supposedly never jams. I'm sure they, they don't. I never had any jams in this original model either. Um, so as I was saying, I, was, I, was, I would say the original model may be marginally quicker, uh, but again, this, most of the time it's not a, a speed of fire game. Um, The stock is definitely better on the new model. That's proper walnut. This is made by Miroku in Japan. And one of these days, if they'll have me, I'll have to hop on a plane and go over there. I mean, the guns that Miroku turns out are so high quality. Some people don't like things made in other countries. And I can understand that. It's, I guess, always nice to see something made in the home country. On the other hand, they make guns too, and um, and good ones. So, and this this, I guess I would probably give the nod to the new one just because of the appearance. I mean, look what you're getting. This is not an overpriced 22. I don't know what the new Tika 22 is going to cost, but this is a great rifle. Oh, and why can I say that? You you never see me shoot, or rarely. I um I have this same gun in uh, 17 HMR. It's the digital green model, and I bought it for almost nothing because of that digital green stock. For some reason, I don't know, the dealer said nobody wants those. So I bought it for some ridiculous price. I took it out, and I think I made a video. It's an it's a exceptional rifle, and I can't see why this would be any different. So um, there it is, the, the two rifles compared, and if you're looking for a an entirely useful, usable, efficient 22. 
and you don't want a conventional bolt action, and you don't want a semi-auto, I guess you can buy the Remington pump. That's another way to go. But somehow that Remington pump doesn't have the fit and finish of the of the Browning. So yeah, that I, I highly recommend this. I would give this rifle a 9 out of 10 overall. It has the proper safety. I don't know about gold-plated triggers. It's probably plastic or aluminum, but some people like that. They put it on there for a reason. And uh, accuracy-wise, excellent. So there it is. Now, as you know, I don't... You know, I, I don't live in museums, um, but I like old rifles. And this, just because I'm familiar with it, um, if, if it has faults, I'm not aware of them. And they reintroduced the T-bolt for, for a reason. That means there were a lot of people that missed them. But I do have to say the styling and, you know, everything else about the new T-bolt is excellent. So there it is, and uh, thanks for the suggestion. I had quite a few uh, messages, so I, I, I don't acknowledge just one person, but it was, it was good. And uh, I hope that's useful, and um, I really can't think of anything else to say about this T-Bolt. It's easy to scope, easy to shoot. Might not be bad if they threw some iron sights. Maybe there's a model that has them. Anyway, that's about it. Thanks for watching.